So we're going live now. Yes, Alex, I, oh, I thought you meant only for the Instagram page. I'm going to send it out now to the group chat. All right, no talking now. We're going to go live. Azaria, watch the live stream for me on... Okay. I just got the notification. Hello, today we're going to be making breakfast and preparing a lunch box for school. Let's start with some sugar and salt and wash it down with a nice big glass of more sugar. And now for the lunch box. Let's put in saturated fat, more salt and sugar. Foods high in salt, fats and sugar increase the risk of hypertension, obesity, heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Now more than ever, we have the right to know what's in our food. Give us warning labels on the front of our food packages. Hello, today we're going to be making breakfast and preparing a lunch box for school. Let's start with some sugar and salt and wash it down with a nice big glass of more sugar. And now for the lunch box. Let's put in saturated fat, more salt and sugar. Foods high in salt, fats and sugar increase the risk of hypertension, obesity, heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Now more than ever, we have the right to know what's in our food. Give us warning labels on the front of our food packages. Hello. Today we're going to be making breakfast and preparing a lunch box for school. Let's start with some sugar and salt and wash it down with a nice big glass of more sugar. And now for the lunch box. Let's put in saturated fat, more salt and sugar. Foods high in salt, fats and sugar increase the risk of hypertension, obesity, heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Now more than ever, we have the right to know what's in our food. Give us warning labels on the front of our food packages. So we are here tonight at our University of Technology Association of Nutrition and Dietetic Students as we are having our second night of activities. And tonight we're going to be hearing from Mrs. Sabrina Palomino from the Southern Southeastern Regional Health Authority, and she's a registered nutritionist. But before she comes, we're going to be just warming up a little bit. We're going to be getting ourselves ready. We welcome all our persons who have tuned in from on YouTube and all our persons here in the Zoom room. I hope everybody's feeling good tonight and I hope everybody heard our, our interview today on Radio Jamaica. And we thank the Heart Foundation for that great opportunity. 
So tonight we have a great lecture in store. I know many persons are looking forward to be hearing that lecture tonight. So I'm asking us all just to be ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy the proceeding. But before we go, we're going to just have a short prayer. And then we're going to invite, we're going to ask Miss Janiel Stevens or second vice president just to give us a greeting an audio greeting and we'll get right into the activities tonight good evening everyone please bow your head in your very spaces heavenly father we give you thanks lord god for your goodness towards us we give you thanks like jesus that we are alive and well and that we can join for this our first night of nutrition week first day god i pray lord jesus that you lord god will bless the presenter lord god i pray lord jesus that the knowledge that you will impart on us shall be that effective mighty god i pray that we put it into practice i pray that everything will flow mighty god i pray lord jesus that even there will be no technical difficulties mighty god i pray lord jesus for your coverage right now bless us lord god with your choicest blessings in jesus name i pray amen Amen, amen, amen. So I will now hand over to Mrs. Palomino without any further ado. We now welcome her. Mrs. Palomino, as I said earlier, is a registered nutritionist. She's a past student from the University of Technology, Jamaica. And she is here tonight to share with us on is my fork digging my grave? And she's just going to be sharing with us healthy eating, etc. So she's going to give a little introduction of herself and then she's going to get straight into the presentation. Over to you, Mrs. Palomino. We're not hearing you. Your mic is muted. Hello, you hearing me now? Yes, we're hearing you now. All right, good night, everyone. As Alex said, I'm Sabrina Palomino, a registered nutritionist with the Southeast Regional Health Authority based in St. Catherine at the St. Catherine Health Department. He asked me to introduce myself. Well, I am a lover of food. I love nutrition, hence why I'm a nutritionist. Food is very important to the body, it's very important for life, for well-being. And I'm also a lover of netball, right? It's a sport that I love to play. I've been playing since primary school, still play up to today. But due to COVID, you know, it's on restriction for now, but hopefully to get back on board. So tonight I will be presenting and sharing with you on healthy eating. So the main topic for tonight's presentation is, is our fork dig digging our graves, right? Now we live in a, what you call a convenience age where almost everything that we eat or majority of the things that we eat are usually pre-prepared, they're usually processed foods. And as such, it puts us at risk for developing conditions such as diabetes, type two diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, and obesity. Now, during my years of practice, by having conversation with persons, most of them Think that healthy eating is something that is expensive and it's very complicated and it's something that they they cannot manage or something that they don't see as achievable because one they cannot afford it and two it's just too much there's just too much things to do because once you go on the internet you type in something there's always some new diet out there different recommendations so it's a whole lot of information so what i would like to present tonight is healthy eating and I like to break it down so we can see that good nutrition doesn't have to be complicated or expensive, right? If we look at various aspects, we look at our food-based dietary guideline, which I think is a very, very good tool that develop, that comes out of the Ministry of Health and it gives us very good guidelines as in how to eat healthy and to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So let's move into our presentation. Now, Healthy eating, as we know, means eating a variety of foods that provide nutrients that your body needs for you to maintain your health, for you to feel good and to have energy. 
food give us nutrients and our basic nutrients are our protein, our carbohydrates, our fats, our vitamins, our minerals, and water. Our body needs these vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, and proteins to function well and to carry out our daily function. So as such, when we eat, we need to include all these nutrients and not exclude any at all. Now, nutrition is important for everyone. From the baby straight up to the adults, nutrition play a vital role. Whether you're living with some chronic disease or not, nutrition is very important. When combined with physical activity and maintaining a healthy weight, healthy eating is an excellent way to keep your body strong and for you to stay healthy. Now, there's always the notion of diet versus healthy eating. Most persons think that in order for you to be healthy, you have to be on a particular diet. And there are so many diets out there. The new kid on the block, the one that's carrying the swing, everybody's talking about is the keto. You have the vegetarian, you have the Mediterranean, you have the raw food diet, you have the low carb, the no sugar. There are so many diets out there. And persons think that in order for you to eat healthy, you have to be on a diet. But this is not so, right? Many of these diets, yes, can be healthy, but not all will be healthy, right? And I see the presentation, I think is for tomorrow. We'll look at many of those diets, which I think is a very good area to look at. But remember, no one diet is made for everyone. So um, a person might go on a particular diet and it works for them, while you might go on the same diet and you don't achieve the same outcome as that person, because everybody is an individual. But what we do recommend is that instead of going on a particular diet, that sorry it's best that you eat healthy foods so you receive a wide variety of nutrients in your diet and now and again we indulge in moderation because with most of these diets they have restrictions and they have limitations on certain nutrients and remember all nutrients are important in the body now healthy eating is not complicated as person think it is right and it is sustainable because most persons think that it is very complicated and it's not sustainable. But we need to make, in order for you to make something to work for you, we must use the common knowledge of what we have of what is healthy. Because most of us are aware of healthy foods and what are classified as healthy foods. So we have this common knowledge. We know that fruits are good for us. We know that vegetables are good. Leaner proteins, leaner meat kinds, choosing healthy fats, eating more whole grains and eating less of our processed foods. So most of us already have this basic knowledge of what healthy foods are. However, we're not putting it into practice or maybe we don't know how to apply this basic knowledge. Now, our food choices do matter, right? So in order to get your diet or get your nutrition where you want it to be, you have to start by making small changes. Right, we, when we go into changing, when we're going to want to make changes, we tend to go in and go in full force and rush and be very drastic. So say for example, we decided tomorrow we're going to start to eat healthy. We just go in and we decide that we're not going to, we're just going to cut out everything. We're going to go on high vegetables, on processed foods, all of that. And then we tend to revert back to our old ways because the changes were so drastic. So when you're trying to make healthy choices and trying to change your diet, it's best to start by making small changes. And we usually say you start with one meal and then progress. So you start with the change. So you could choose maybe dinner or breakfast or even lunch, and then you start to make the changes. Don't try to make it perfect. We're human beings, right? So everything is not going to be perfect. And sometimes we might fall off the wagon. We just need to get back on it. What we normally say to help to make good choices is that you try to aim for at least three food groups at a meal. And usually we say the three basic ones, your staples, which provides your carbohydrates, your meat or your, what we call your peas and beans or your legumes, which will provide your protein and you can use your vegetables. Now the picture here on the slide shows somewhat of a good way to get going. Half of your plate of vegetables, the next half, you use your carbohydrate and you have your protein sources and we say when you're trying to change when you're snack when you're trying to make changes you aim for one or two food groups at a snack so when you're trying to change healthy to a healthy snack you maybe replace a processed chips with a fruit 
or you can maybe have fruits and nuts so you can maybe have like your nuts with some raisins so you start to make small changes like that in order to achieve what it is that you want now what can i do to make healthy eating easier so this is a question we probably ask ourselves so what can you do now one of the things that most persons think is that healthier is linked to high cost many of us automatically assume that the more expensive product is usually healthier so if we see two products that are very similar in terms of nutrition and in terms of the, the nutrition content, but one happens to be a name brand and one a store brand, we usually automatically assume that the name brand is much healthier because it is more expensive. So that is usually a pre-notion that we have about healthy eating. We are also more likely to be skeptical of any health claims that we might see in packages of cheaper items than on those of more costly products. So this may be in part because the notion that healthy foods are always more expensive. So this is something when we're trying to eat healthy that we have to get out of. Stop assuming that because a product is higher in cost that it is healthier. No, we need to look at our nutrition facts, which I'm going to go into and compare the nutrition content of the product. And then most time you'll see that they're basically similar nutrition content and one is just more expensive than the other. So buying the store brand versus the name brand is usually not a bad option in terms of nutrition. Now, another thing that we look at is the high cost that is associated with everybody. Most persons are now looking towards organic versus non-organic foods. But I ask the question, seriously, what's the difference between organic versus non-organic foods? So we know that organic foods tend to be far more expensive versus non-organic foods. And we know that organic foods are guaranteed to be pesticide and antibiotic free, but they are not considered to be nutritionally superior to non-organic. So some healthy foods are usually Notable, very inexpensive, like some whole grains or peas and beans and our in-season fruits and vegetables. So when we're trying to eat healthy, it's not that we have to go organic. No, because the difference between in terms of the nutritional quality between organic and non-organic is usually, there's none. It's usually the same thing. The only thing is that organic is guaranteed to be pesticide and anti antibiotic free, and they usually cost twice as much as the non-organic product. We must also, when we're trying to eat healthy, resist the allure of claims such as superfoods. You might go on the internet or see something and add or anything claiming a food to be superfoods. And once they have such a claim, they tend to attract a higher cost. And this term is not regulated because there's no definition or anything to make a food superior to another, right? So be weary of this claim of superfoods they tend to attract a higher cost and basically they're usually not nutritionally superior to any od other competitors simply increasing the volume and variety of fruits and vegetables and whole grains in your diet will help will provide and be the superfood that you need to help to reduce the risk of your illnesses such as your diabetes your hypertension your high cholesterol and they will not be costly because these superfoods usually come at a higher cost. Now, we need to look at our food label. This rectangular box that we see on the back or the side of our packages are very, very important because they do tell us a lot about the food that we eat. And remember earlier when I was saying to you that you need to look at your store brand versus your name brand, you look at the nutrition facts and compare and see the similarities, do they have the same amount or similar amount of carbohydrates, proteins, your vitamins and your minerals that you're looking for in your product? Are they less or similar in the sodium content? So we need to look at that. So we need to look at our nutrition label. And I know that we're moving forward, as you can see with the video that was shown earlier, Jamaica is moving forward, forward with the front of packaging labels by putting warning labels on the front of our packages which would be easier for consumers to make healthier choices. Now, with our nutrition labels, we encourage when you're trying to eat healthy, 
you look for certain things. You try to look for foods that are low in saturated fat and are trans fats and sodiums, because we know these can lead to conditions such as high blood pressure, heart disease, and stuff like that. Now, what is usually best with our food labels is that when you pick up a package and you look at the saturated fat and the trans fat, if the percentage daily volume you see on it is usually 5% or less, this is usually a desirable product to have. And also using that too as well, what you could look at as a quick guide, you want to look at things such as your nutrients, your vitamins, your A, C, D, calcium, and iron that are reported on some of these nutrition labels. If it's 20% or more in these, it's usually a good source. So what we're basically saying is that if you want to look at a food and know if it is a good choice for you, right? If it is less than 5% of, uh, of say the sodium or the trans fat, then that is good or the sugars, because if that's what you're trying to aim towards, then that would be a good product for you. If you're trying to increase your iron, your fiber content, your vitamins and minerals, and you look at a nutrition panel and you see that it has more than 20% in the percentage daily value, then that is a good source. We also need to check the ingredients list, meaning you have to look at your ingredients because say for example, sugar comes in many forms and has many names many names, sorry. So you need to check your ingredients list and you need to check for things. You might see beet sugars, you might see high fructose corn syrup. So you need to check your ingredients list and look at what is in the food that you're consuming. So you can make healthier choices or more informed choices as to what you are putting into your body. Now, one of the main things is that persons think that healthy eating is expensive. And what we usually recommend that you do is that you try to shop in season, meaning you shop for produce strategically, stick to what is in season. So if a fruit or a vegetable is in season or your grown provisions, they tend to be generally cheaper versus if they're not in season. So when you're shopping and trying to eat healthy, you focus on in season products because those tend to be a lot cheaper. A really up-to-date example would be like, for example, tomatoes. In December, tomatoes were almost $1,000 a pound. Now you can get it for like, what, $30 or $50 a pound. So you use what is in season, because once it's in season, it tends to be cheaper. And there's nothing wrong with frozen produce. They are usually just as nutritious as the fresh produce. So most persons are afraid of freezing and having to use it later on because they're saying it might lose its nutrition quality. No, it doesn't lose its nutrition quality. It might lose, lose the, what you call the, how it looks. It might not be as appealing as when it is fresh, but once frozen, it usually is similar in terms of nutrition content. So we can use our frozen produce. So even for examples, or say pumpkins, if pumpkins are in season and we happen to buy excess and we don't want them to waste, we can always cut them and freeze them and you can always use them in things like your soups, in your rice to make pumpkin rice. So that way you eat at each meal, you're getting a vegetable and you are not incurring any extra costs. Also, we say skip your pre-cut or your slice items because these tend to carry a premium cost, but they offer no nutritional boost. I want to give you guys a challenge, maybe go into the supermarket and look at the price of a sliced bread versus that of one that is not sliced and see if there's usually a difference in the cost because usually these items will carry more an additional cost just for the added luxury of a pre-cut or pre-slice and that's and they're usually not superior in terms of nutrition so as i said earlier buy the fresh produce that are in season freeze them for later use our fruits, we can always, the overripe ones, we can freeze them. They can be added to our smoothies, right? Our frozen vegetables can be used in our soups. And we always say plan ahead, plan your, week, your meals for the week. So you're less likely to buy an impulse when you're shopping. So you'll have your list and you know exactly what you need. So you will not spend extra or excess on unnecessary items. Now, how can we make these healthy choices? This is known as our food-based dietary guideline for Jamaica. It's a tool coming out of the Ministry of Health, and it is a very useful tool. The brochures can be found on the website that has 
the principle that tells you about the food-based dietary guideline and the eight steps that are used. And I like these eight steps. I think they're very simple to understand and they're also wide enough to allow the nutrition professional to engage and to explain more to their clients about how they can improve their overall nutrition. There are usually eight steps. And the first one is to eat a variety of foods from all the food groups daily eat a variety of fruits daily, eat a variety of vegetables, to include more peas, beans, and nuts in your daily meals, to reduce your intake of salty and processed food, reduce your intakes of fats and oil, and reduce your intake of sugary foods and drinks, and to make physical activity a part of your daily routine. So let's break this down. So the first step is to eat a variety of foods from all the food groups daily. So we, the six food groups are staples, our food from animals, our fats and oils, fruits and vegetables, and our legumes and nuts. So from all these six food groups, we want you to make choices and make healthier choices from these food groups. And how you go about making healthier choices is you try to have more whole grains versus your refined grains. So especially with your staple foods, in order to eat healthy, we do encourage that you try to have more whole grains versus that of your white or your processed foods because your whole grains would have additional vitamins and minerals as well as antioxidants that will not be present in your white food. So you'll be missing out on certain nutrients when you choose your white over your whole wheat. So we encourage you to choose more of your whole grains. Make half of your grains a half of the food that you eat daily be from your whole grains. And as I said before, your refined grains are usually stripped of valuable nutrients and your whole grains speaks to your grown provisions as well. Your sweet potatoes, your cassavas, your plantains, your yams, those are considered whole grains because they do have naturally occurring fibers in them as well as your B vitamins and antioxidants. Now, I put this here because I want persons to look and analyze. I've looked at what is considered four grains, the quinoa or long grain brown rice or white rice and our bulgur. So of these products, if you look at the calories, they tend to be nutritionally, they tend to be similar in calories, right? Quinoa 220, the long grain brown rice 200, the white rice 205 calories. And this is in a one cup cooked rice, basically. In terms of the carb content, right, if you look at your brown rice versus your white rice, they tend to have similar carb content. If you look at the bulgur, it has less carbs. If you look at your protein content, the quinoa would be superior in terms of protein, but the bulgur is similar in range to that of it. If you look at fat, the quinoa is a higher fat. The brown rice has some fat, while the bulgur doesn't. In terms of fiber, the... Bulgur is superior in terms of fiber. The quinoa comes second, followed by a long grain brown rice. And in terms of sugar content, just a, a measly amount, one gram the, in our quinoa, the others have none. Why do I put this here? If we look at the cost of these grains, so as to say, one might be ranging, say, for example, the quinoa might be ranging up to $1,000, basically, while versus that of your brown rice or your white rice or your bulgur might be in a price range of maybe say $100 per pound versus the others. If you look at the nutrition content, you realize that they're similar in terms of calories, right? The carbs, the protein content and the fiber content. So what is important is that when we're making choices, we have to look at what is in the food and not assume that because something costs $1,000, it is superior in terms of the nutrition content versus something that might cost $100. So when we're making our choices, we have to look at things like that. So if we can afford the one that's for $1,000, there's nothing wrong with that. But if we cannot, there's always low cost, healthier choices out there that provide similar nutrition content and are usually half the price. We say when you're, try when you're trying to eat healthy, you choose leaner proteins. These are usually healthier, they're lower in fat, and also they're higher in edible portions. What I mean by that is that 
with leaner meats, you get more protein, you get more for your bulk, basically, because you don't have the excess fat that you might cut off and throw away, or you don't have bones and stuff that you're not going to eat and they you know, don't offer any nutritional benefits, so as to say. So you choose your leaner cuts of meat because you usually get higher edible portions. Now, we say usually three to seven servings of your food from animals, and you see your serving sizes, a small drumstick, a medium egg, an ounce of cheese, half cup of milk, an ounce of fish. So that is usually your serving sizes. And most of us, we tend to overconsume, and that's another thing that is a deterrent to healthy eating, is that we eat a whole lot. So we're using the, our forks to dig our graves, so we're eating excess. So it's actually costing us more. So we tend to want to have three pieces of meat, three pieces of chicken versus one piece that will give us enough protein that our body needs. So we tend to overeat and it costs us more. And as such, we tend to say, you know what, I can't bother with this. Healthy eating is very, very expensive. Third step is that of eat a variety of fruits and vegetables daily. Now, we need to, I always say, try to eat the rainbow when it comes to our fruits and our vegetables. Because if we only eat one particular type of fruit, we're only getting one particular type of nutrient. And I know culturally, we love just, we love orange and ripe bananas. And they tend to, basically, if you eat that every day, you're getting the same nutrient, but your body needs variety. So we encourage you to eat the rainbow. So when you're having fruits and vegetables, try to make your plate as colorful as possible. Because all these colors have different nutrients and different phytonutrients or what we call antioxidant properties. So like our purple fruits, they have in them something that is called anthocyanins. And these are very helpful in helping to prevent heart disease. So we'll find them in grape, but not only that, we can find anthocyanins in ribe what we call ribena in Jamaica. They're in our grapes or ribena or eggplant. Anything that is purple in color usually have this type of phytonutrient. Chlorophyll, which we know we normally find in our green leafy vegetables and they help to keep the eyes healthy and the bones and teeth strong. Our carotenoids and our flavonoids are usually found in our yellow and orange vegetables. And we know these are good for the eyes. They help to keep the heart healthy and to boost the immune system. And lycopene, which we usually find in our red fruits and vegetables are very good in helping to prevent heart disease and help with prostate and colon cancer. And we know it's colorectal cancer month. So, you know, we want to encourage persons to eat as much of the rainbow as they can. So they can get these, not just your basic nutrients, but also your phytonutrients, which are good antioxidants for our bodies. Now, what is a serving of fruits and vegetables? Because we tend to think when we say eat more fruits and vegetables, that we have to eat a whole lot. So our servings of vegetables is usually one cup, one is cooked of your cabbage, your callaloo, your okra, your pap choy, Raw is as desired, half cup of our carrot or pumpkin is a serving and three quarter cup string beans. So usually we say two to three servings. So just by adding a cup of steamed veg to your, say with your lunch and then with your dinner, you will basically meet the basic needs of your daily vegetable servings. Our fruits is usually two servings per day, two to three servings. Our focus on whole fruits are usually more nutritious and we recommend that you try to eat your fruits instead of blending because when we blend, most of the times we blend and then we squeeze and we strain and then we throw away the fibers and those other nutrients that, that might be embedded in the pulp and the skin of our fruits. So we encourage you to eat your fruits more than you make blend them. Right, serving sizes are usually a half cup of fruit juice, a medium apple, 14 grapes, a cup of watermelon. So usually, all we need is basically, if we have a medium apple and a cup of watermelon, we meet the basic daily fruit intake, an orange and a ripe banana, and we meet the basic. So it doesn't mean when we say eat healthy and you eat more fruits, we don't expect you to go out there and buy an apple, some grapes, pineapples, and a, var a whole heap of fruits and consume them all in a day. Once again, that will be eating excess. You just need two to meet your basic servings. We, another step is that to include more peas, beans, and nuts in your daily meals. And we usually don't need more than three servings per day. Now, this is a good source of protein, very high in fiber, and 
dried peas and beans are usually relatively inexpensive. And I always say they're double for your buck. Because if you cook a half cup of dried peas, once cooked, it's equal to what a cup. So we normally say you could combine them with your animal protein to get more for your dollar. So you can always, stew peas is a good option. Or if you're curing chicken, you can add some chickpeas. So that way you can maybe bulk up your protein sources. If you're running low on say animal-based protein, you can always combine your peas and beans with them. Also, we recommend that when we're having foods that we call incomplete protein, like our chicken back or a chicken foot or a chicken neck, where the protein content is usually very low, we encourage that you add some peas and beans. And this will help to improve the nutrition content in terms of the protein for those meals. So serving sizes are usually a quarter cup cooked peas and 10 almonds and 16 peanuts. So and we say three servings per day. So most of us will get these big cans of peanuts and we tend to just consume them within a day or two. And then we're taking in the excess again and then too much the body will store that as fat. So what we encourage you to do is to stick with your portion sizes. The second to last step asks you to reduce your intake of salty and processed foods because we are having high incidences of high blood pressure. And we normally say once you have high blood pressure, you keep your sodium or your salt content low to 2000 milligrams. And usually that is basically a teaspoon of salt per day. So we do not, want you to have more than a teaspoon of salt. If, if you're not living with high blood pressure, no more than a teaspoon of salt in anything that you're preparing. And if you have high blood pressure, it's usually cut down to half a teaspoon per day. So we say when you're reading your food labels, when you have high blood pressure and you're trying to reduce your salty and processed food, you aim for the percentage daily value to be five or less. And also it's best to prepare your own meals because you have better control of what you put in your meals. We do encourage you to reduce your intake of fats and oils. Fats are, and oils are very important in the diet. Our body needs it. So it's not that we want you to cut it out. What we want you to do is to reduce it because the excess can be harmful. So we say you choose more unsaturated fats such as your vegetable oils or your nuts oil versus your saturated fats or your trans fat that you would get from your meat, your butter, your cheese, pizza, your processed foods and stuff like that. The last step is that to reduce your intake of sugary foods and drinks. So foods that are high in sugar tend to be what is known as empty calories. So basically all that is in them is sugars. They're lacking other essential nutrients and they're usually very higher in calories and they're not as filling. Now it's important that we read our food labels and we look at the sugar content because uh, as this picture shows you, four grams of sugar is equal to a teaspoon. And most of the times, which I like to show my patient is that if I see them drinking a particular juice or soda, I will turn around the label and we go through it together for them to realize the nutrition, the sugar content of many of these things. Because a bottle of soda can have up to 16 teaspoons of sugar in, say, a 20 ounce bottle of soda. And when you show them that, you know, they're usually like, wow, really? But I don't taste it. So what, that's why we're encouraging them to reduce their intake of sugar foods and drinks because you really might not taste how sweet it is, but it is usually very high in sugar. Now, to conclude, it's very important that we remember some points. Healthy eating it is not complicated and it is not expensive. We basically have the knowledge already about foods that are good for us, our fruits, our vegetables, our whole grains, our leaner meats. Now it's just for us to put them into practice and to apply them. We need to eat more of our whole foods or our whole grain foods because they're usually healthier and they're usually not as expensive as we think they are. We should eat more of our fruits and vegetables and eat them in a variety of colors. And remember our serving sizes or daily recommendations, usually two to three per day. So that means you don't need a whole lot. And we say buy what is in season. So you eat protein from your meat or your non-meat sources, which are your peas and beans. But once again, keep them within your portion sizes because we tend to eat more and then it costs us more in the, run, in the long run because we're gonna have to replace them or buy more. We need to drink more of our water. That is very, very important. And we need to choose foods that work for you and avoid foods that affect your body negatively. So what that means is that you have to know what works for your body 
if you eat a certain food and you feel a certain way, then you leave it alone. And we also encourage you, if you're going to indulge, you indulge in moderation so you do not deprive yourself. So most of the times when we think we're eating healthy, we cannot have a little dessert. Yes, you can, but in moderation, you don't do it on a regular basis and you do not overconsume. All right, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Hope it was informative and you have learned something. So I know hand back over to you, Alex. Wow, wow, that's all I can say. Wow, after such a lovely presentation, I know that we all must have learned something from such a lovely presentation. And we have a bunch of questions. So my people, my people on YouTube, I'm inviting you all to give some information. I see persons in the chat um, on YouTube. Um, Shamika Ashton saying whole grain all the way. And Barian Brown, uh, no, Rosanna Pike, very informative. Thank you, Miss Palomino. Oh, Miss Pike from the Heart Foundation. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We appreciate you and all the persons here on Zoom. Now, if you have questions, please post it in the chat. We have our treasurer, Miss Azaria, who is watching carefully for all the persons who are asking questions. So uh, there are questions in the chat for you, Mrs. Palomina. So Kevon yes. Duncan has a question. Kevon, you can unmute, introduce yourself and... Um, ask the question. Dr. Palomino, as no, always. No, I'm not a doctor. Thank you. thank you very, very much for that lecture. It was very informative. I consider myself somebody to be well-versed in nutrition, but you make me feel like I don't know nothing, right? So my question is, you were mentioning um, the, the lack of organic. a difference between organic and non-organic foods, right? Yes. So what I was questioning is, the effects of the herbicides, insecticides, etc., on our health, would the benefit then of the organic food not be worth it? Yes, in terms of that, because we know some of the foods can have pesticides and herbicides and antibiotic, especially antibiotic in our dairy products. I know there's a huge concern about that worldwide. But remember, certain, when certain foods are being made or being processed, there are certain standards that they have to meet and there are certain tests that are usually run to determine how safe these foods are for us in terms of human consumption. So usually the foods that are supposed to be put, put out on the market for us, usually if there's pesticide or herbicide residues are usually are supposed to be low. And we have to look at our context and where we live in terms of Jamaica in terms of that organic foods have to be regulated, they have to go under some strict standards. And I don't think we are at that stage yet in terms of us out here in terms of organic products. So most of the foods that we consume would be non-organic. So we do not want our, our clients, our persons to think that, oh, the food that we have here is it's not organic, so I will not have it because it will not benefit me. But what we want you to understand is that we have to look at the context in which we live and eat accordingly. So the foods that we have out here are, are usually safe in terms of low in pesticides and herbicides and safe for consumption. Thank you very much for that very thorough answer. Any more questions in the chat room and on on? I I don't have a question. Good night, Mrs. Palomino. Great night. presentation. I am just falling in love with nutrition over and over again. I love the point that you made out about um that you that, that being healthy doesn't mean that it has to be expensive i love the point about the different the different diets that are out there um seeing that persons normally think that a vegetarian or a vegan diet is more healthier it is better than a normal diet i love the part, part where you said that um we should eat from the different food groups in moderation to 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 to, to restrict um these comorbidities and the chronic diseases i really love your presentation very good easy to understand and continue doing the great work i'm really happy uh, thank you thank you 
We have a question here from YouTube for you, Mrs. Palo. For the college students who love to snack while we study and end up eating a lot of ca empty calories, what are some good and healthy study snacks you would recommend? I know this is something that everybody asks in, in their mind. Yes. Yeah, so remember in one of the earlier slides, we say your snacks try to aim for one to two food groups. So when you're studying, you want to try to stay away from empty calories because say your chips and your sodas, because they usually, they go through the body very quickly. So a good snack option would be, for example, combining your nuts with a fruit. Remember the nuts will have protein in them and protein tends to delay gastric emptying. So that way it sits in the stomach a little bit longer. So you won't be as hungry quickly versus just having say a chips and a soda that is just basically carbs. So you can use your options with your your nuts and your fruits, and of course your water, and that would be a good option to have. Wow, the question, the answers, Mrs. Palomina. I don't know how people don't go, people don't go to a nutritionist and they listen to all of these coach online that don't know anything. But <laughs> is my fart digging my grave? I believe that after this today, we can conform, we can pull ourselves back in, and where we see that we have been going wrong, we can make corrections. Mrs. Palomino, I do thank you. Is there any more questions? I don't want such a great mind to go. And yes, I have a question. I have a question. Okay, great. I have a question. So um, I see these um, advertisements out there and a lot of stuff on social media about um, detox tea and all of those stuff. Do you do? Would you recommend doing or taking detox teas or stuff like that? Some of those supplements, I don't know where they get them from. But do you think do you think that person should be putting these things into their bodies? And do you think that it is effective? Well, we have to look, You that's why your nutrition facts is important and your ingredient list to look at what is in many of these products. Because if you look at some of them, they're basically the basic ingredient that is in any other form of tea or tea bags. So, you know, is basically what I see is they're selling the idea that is detox, but then when you compare the ingredients list, if you can get it for most of them, it's usually it's just usually herbs, basic teas that you will have. And then in terms of detox, we have to be realistic in terms of if somebody decides that they're going to detox and you detox for a week and then you revert back to your old eating habits, then you nullify the entire thing of detoxing. So you do a week of, say, increase water, your fruits and your vegetables, say you're cleansing the body, and then you just only do that for that week, and you revert back to your old unhealthy eating habits, then it doesn't make sense. So that's why we want persons to change their overall eating habits to one that is sustainable, to eat healthy, get more of your fruits and vegetables, your whole grain. So basically, you're detoxing your body every day. You're getting in your fibers, you're getting in your poly your polyphenols, your phytonutrients and stuff like that, that will help to clean and cleanse the body on a regular basis. Wow, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just shocked. For all the persons who access this wonderful service in the Southern, the Southeastern Regional Health Authority, especially the persons from St. Catherine and all the people from the St. Diego Health Center and all the health centers that Mrs. Palomino work, I am really thrilled tonight i'm really empowered i got so much points i've had, i've got so much points to write down somebody asked if this would be shared um i believe it would be shared only in with the nutrition students i don't think this could be publicly shared because it is mrs palomino's um content but mrs palomino we thank you very much i'm going to invite the person who is to be doing the formal thanks tonight we're going to be closing up but before we go one last time is there any more questions i see quite a number of persons here on youtube we are here with the great mrs palomino <laughs> our registered uh, alex you're person. very flattering <laughs> <laughs> is my fart digging my grave and we looked on healthy eating habits but is there any yes, more I have questions another question. go ahead, I have another go ahead. Question. 
Doctor ko lang ninyo. No, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I am secret in existence. Okay. Claiming. All right, That's I'm it. claiming it. I'm claiming That's it. That's right. So, um, I would like to know on a daily basis, um, what is the worst case scenario you've seen with patients coming in for nutrition consultations? Have you seen any, any cases where they cannot be helped at all? Well, because we're I'm mostly based in community, so you know the, the complications that we see are usually chronic, and they're not usually and they're not acute. So they're usually chronic disease that are usually manageable. So what I realize is that the main barrier to change for most of these persons that we see is what I like to call them sick. So as to say, in terms of their, when you go, they go into the communities and they listen to their neighbors or to persons about certain things. And then they come into you with some preconceived notion already about what is healthy and what is not. And then trying to break down that barrier usually takes a while, right? Because, you know, you have to basically re-educate them about the correct nutrition information. Because one of the main ones that we realize is that persons some persons with diabetes will not take their medication and they'll tell you, oh, they're having string bean, they're blending the juice and they're using the tip because they've been told that string bean have insulin, which we know it doesn't have insulin because it's a plant. So, you know, we have to basically re-educate them is that it has inulin, which might sound similar to insulin. So, you know, they might have heard it from their neighbors or somebody in the community, them say. I always say that's a very dangerous person. And then now we have to now try to break down that misinformation that they already have and try to replace it. And sometimes they're not really ready for change. So that is usually one of the major barriers or complications that we will have with persons coming in. Okay, well said, well said. But you know, the funny thing about it, I always wonder, why is it that when these patients go to like doctors and so forth, other healthcare professionals, they, whatever the doctor tell them, it is, it is gospel, right? And they hold on to that. But whenever they come to nutritionist or somebody else, they're like, no, I know, so you go, doctor says so. And I mean, it's just crazy. It is. So we have a lot of work to do, right? So when you guys come out into the field, you re realize you have, we, you know, it's a lot for us to do and, you know, it's a lot to correct. So we have to be diligent and work hard and push through and not give up. Indeed. Thanks indeed. very much to Dr. Sabrina. <laughs> that tonight because after that presentation, I don't know, we right. cannot have any more confidence in the nutrition field. And guys, for persons who are from the University of Technology and from the Northern Caribbean University and you heard all that information you that we had yesterday and coming back again today, it is just a mouthful. So we're going to our beds tonight edified. And I hope that this will invigor our breakfast choices tomorrow when we get up. I hope that person is not planning to skip breakfast tomorrow. But we greet everybody in the YouTube chat. We greet all persons tuned in on YouTube. We just had one of the greatest presentations from Mrs. Sabrina Palomino, registered nutritionist at the Southern Regional, the Southeast Regional Health Authority. So we have come to an end of a lovely program. I'm just gonna play an ad once more from our, the Heart Foundation of Jamaica, our title sponsors for this nutrition week. And they have a ad on reading your food label campaign. And if you want to hear from them, ensure that you are at our upcoming lecture on Thursday. Not really a lecture, but more of a Q&A session where they will be coming in. And we see Miss Rosanna Pike in the chat. She will be one of the presenters, a past student of the University of Technology, Jamaica. And we have a lot of things in store for you tomorrow, same time. Mr. Kevin Duncan, a second year student at the University of Technology will be presenting to us an unveiling fat diet. So to, we're going to be keep on stepping up. And on Wednesday, we're going to be having our workout session. So people, 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 there's things going on. And for the persons who will be re-watching this, 
you would you are in for a treat for the rest of the week's activity. And if you miss it, you can catch up on our YouTube channel. So let us listen to this advertisement from the Heart Foundation of Jamaica. Hello. Today we're going to be making breakfast and preparing a lunch box for school. Let's start with some sugar and salt and wash it down with a nice big glass of more sugar. And now for the lunch box. Let's put in saturated fat, more salt, and sugar. Foods high in salt, fats, and sugar increase the risk of hypertension, obesity, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. Now more than ever, we have the right to know what's in our food. Give us warning labels on the front of our food packages. We thank you all for tuning in tonight. I'm going to invite the person who will be doing the vote of thanks to Mrs. Palomina and to all our persons gathered tonight. Can that person go ahead now and give us the vote of thanks? Alex? Go ahead, go ahead. The vote of thanks now for me. Okay, I just to make sure. I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry about that. Like the internet literally just tripped out all ago. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Go ahead, Kevin, with the vote of thanks. So, Mrs. Palomino, I'd just like to say on behalf of the UTAN's executive and the entire DN body, thank you very much for coming forth and doing this public lecture for us. I know that I have learned something. And as I said, I consider myself to be very well-versed in nutrition. And I know everybody has took something from this. So thank you very much. Thank you guys for having me. All right, guys, we hope to see you back again tomorrow. Tell a friend, tell a friend to tell a friend as we come together for at 7 p.m. tomorrow with Unveiling Fat Diets with Mr. Kevin Duncan. This is our Nutrition Week 2021, University of Technology Association of Nutrition and Dietetic Students. Thank you all for tuning in tonight and have a blessed evening. Thank you. <laughs>